Well, hi, good morning, and <clears throat> thank you for joining me here in my shop. Today is September 23rd, and we're going to be taking a look at this uh, capacitor checker here. Um, I really didn't uh, plan on making a video on this. I didn't expect there to be <clears throat> problems, or if there was, any problem with it could be solved quickly. You can see it's out of the cabinet, and the reason is it's not working, and after spending Oh, maybe half an hour poking around thinking I'm gonna fix this quick no I didn't so I thought well this is turning into a bit of an interesting repair journey uh, my familiarity with things uh, other than regular radios isn't all that great so this might be a little bit of a challenge for me but uh, what I hope to do is poke around some more and find out what has gone wrong with this so the first starting point is to uh, once again convince myself it's not working just in case I'm totally mistaken about everything. So I'm going to switch it on. While it's warming up, you can see I have a capacitor connected to the uh, test uh, terminals. And I'll just go over the panel controls here fairly quick. I mean, I have a very similar capacitor checker here that I use all the time. And it's got essentially the same features. It just looks a little different. The magic eye has come on. So we'll start with this control. This control really sets the machine on what function it's going to perform. It can do bridge, which means measuring the capacitance. Discharge, which is a neutral position, puts a short on the capacitor to discharge it. And at the bottom here is leakage. Leakage is probably the most handy feature of these uh, units. It's a very simple idea, it just applies a DC voltage to the uh, capacitor under test and then the device is designed to be very sensitive to tiny amounts of leakage through the capacitor a tiny amount of leakage shows an effect on the eye and then you can make a judgment as to whether the capacitor an old capacitor like a new one like this won't leak but an old capacitor is going to be leaking to to some degree this gives you a somewhat semi-quantitative view of it as a control here which adjusts the voltage that you're applying to the capacitor as many many steps starts at 3 volts and goes all the way up to 600 volts which is really pretty high and uh, so I'm just going to put this back down here it's probably good to remember to return this to the lowest setting all the time now the a unit will measure resistance. You can hook up a resistor here, and if you set this range control in the resistance settings, then it's it's an ohmmeter capable of reading a, a fairly high resistance. And it has three uh, regular capacitor settings here. This is X.001, it means times 0 0.001 times 0 0.01 times 1. So if we had this on this scale, and if we flip this up to bridge, then we try measuring the capacitance of this by rotating the control dial until the eye opens. So normally it would, it would be closed, and when you hit the right spot, the eye opens. It's quite sharp, at least on my other tester it's quite sharp. And my other tester has proven to be quite accurate, and I really haven't done anything to it to calibrate it or whatever, but it's turned out to be quite quite accurate, but seldom am I actually measuring the capacitance of capacitors because if they're new like this, the best way to find out their capacitance is read what it says on it. And uh, if they're old and leaky after doing the leak test, there's no use attempting to measure their capacitance. First, they're leaky, so they're garbage. Secondly, the, the test is distorted by the leak current going through the capacitor, and that's true of just about any kind of of capacitance test on these old, uh, you know, leaky capacitors, uh, you just can't measure the capacitance, but you will get a number if you try. So mostly in the end, what I do with this this device, like my other one, I'll do the same thing with this one. It's pretty much utilize this function uh, entirely. Uh, it has a couple other things here. This is uh, ex external scale. I'm not really sure what that means. Down here, external standard. So if you wished, you could hook up your own standard capacitor. There's a set of standard capacitors in the machine. 
because it, it uses a bridge, so it's basically a comparator. It's going to compare the item under test to the item that's actually installed in the back here. So a high precision capacitor or, or set of high precision capacitors in the back here for that purpose. But you can use an external one here if you care to for some reason. And unless I'm mistaken, you can even put a coil on here, put a coil on here and use this device uh, it's so uh, for doing an inductance. I'm not sure about that, but it certainly has, you know, it talks about an L here. So the last thing is a power factor control. Not the last thing, let me back up, back up one. So this control uh, adjusts, the, basically adjusts the sensitivity of the eye to make it suit the type of capacitor you're testing. Because although a capacitor like this, if this brand new capacitor is leaking, it's an electron at a time, I mean it's next to nothing leaking through this. But if this were a brand new electrolytic capacitor, it would have a leak. That's significant compared to the electron a minute <laughs> leak through here or whatever it would be. So, for, so you can't test this, these two different types of capacitors without recalibrating the machine. That's what this does. So you have an electrolytic setting, and at the bottom it says paper, mica, etc. That's everything else. But it's got one in the middle called mini, I think that's it's M I N, minlytic. Minlytic, I have no idea what that is. I've never seen the term before. Miniature. Lytic? I don't know. So normally this would be down like this. So now we're, we're pretty much ready to test this capacitor. So we will. So I'll put it on the leakage test. Make sure you can see the eye. So the eye is closed. So on my other tester, when I go to do this test, the eye starts open. Let me think about this. There's a trigger switch. There's a spring-loaded trigger switch on my other tester. This one's not spring-loaded. But the eye closes on a leak. So can you see it's closed already? It ain't even gotten anywhere. Three volts. Doesn't really matter. Do you see that? So the charge in the capacitor from the higher voltage is uh, that uh, kind of turns things around, if you like. When you turn down the voltage here, this becomes the source of the voltage in the circuit. And the current flow going, I don't know, put it this way, going back into the machine causes the eye to operate. But in the end, it settles down with basically a short. Now look, if I just take this right off, it's still showing a short. Pull these right out. So that's just not working. It's just not working. Okay, I'm going to put this... Now, if, if you're not careful, there could be a charge on this capacitor. I only got up to like 25 volts. So it won't be much. Let's put this on discharge. When you're using these testers, if you're not thinking, you could pull a capacitor off with a couple hundred volts on it. And then you might find out. <laughs> so we'll let that discharge just for a moment. And we'll attempt the bridge reading. We're on the times one scale, and the capacitor scale is this one here. And with the times one, it's real easy. Just read it direct. So that's 0.1 microfarads here. That's one microfarad, two, three, four, five, 10 microfarads, 50 microfarads. This one is, uh, you know, I'm not sure what this is. 104. 0.01, I think. I'm never too sure. The idea now is the eye should be closed. Good. As I swing this around and I cross the capacitance for the capacitor, the eye should pop open. You see it's wiggling there and doing some funny things. But as you'll see when I demonstrate it, it'll still do these wiggly things even if I don't have a capacitor connected. So, well, maybe we're on the wrong scale. Now, my, my other uh, unit is very dramatic. When you hit the spot, the eye pops right open. It's, it's very, very distinct. But this one, we'll try it on 
scale here. So now, you know, the scale, the multiplier now is 0 0.0001. I'm pretty sure this capacitor is not on this scale, but, but it doesn't really matter what I'm sure about. No response comes the response. So I've done this enough. I'm just showing it to you. I've done this enough. I'm absolutely compared, uh, uh, convinced that the unit's not working. And exactly why? Well, that's what we're going to try to find out now. So I'm going to put this back on discharge. Change in the brightness of the eye. Low brightness, medium brightness, and bright brightness. Probably not intended to work that way. So uh, a few of the things I've done so far already, with all the things that you know, you would hope would kind of solve the problem. One is cleaning these switches. Clean a very. These are black. So I've cleaned them up. I'm sure they're making contact. There's another switch on the other side. It's had no effect on the operation of the unit whatsoever. These uh, adjustments here for calibration, I've just twisted them a little bit at one point just, just to make sure they're, they're in contact or to find out what happens. Nothing happened. I've checked the major capacitors in here. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, I've checked the uh, voltages, the pin voltages. They're all normal, except I only got as far as doing the DC pin voltages, not the signal that's coming through here. We'll look at the schematic and see if I can't figure out how it all works anyway. I thought, well, maybe this is just a problem with the eye. You know, the eye itself could be just, or the circuit around the eye could be, could be the cause of trouble here. So, uh, so I've done the uh, voltage test. Normal voltages are there. There's the one million ohm trouble resistor that on many, many magic eyes, the one million ohm resistor you find associated with the magic eyes, often gone way higher, is even open. This one reads 1.1 1 .1, uh, megaohms. These two capacitors uh, check out. Uh, they seem fine. They look fine. Everything looks fine in here. Um, so this is a Heath kit. Uh, it looks to me like it's professionally built, but you never know who's building these things and where they came from. But when I look at, for instance, how these uh, resistors have been done, how the leads have been bent, uh, this tells me whoever did this has done this a number of times. And this is this is the pattern that they use. If you look at all the work is done really nicely. It's really very, very professionally done. Not to say somebody didn't do this in their home. Uh, I just I think I think this one was built professionally though. That's kind of how it worked with Heathkit. A lot of their equipment you could buy as a kit, but also they would sell it pre-built. And my experience with Heathkit is it two thumbs up on Heathkit equipment. Um, not overly complex. Uh, pretty rugged. Always does what it says. Manuals are great. Uh, so I, I'm not hesitant at all about picking up Heathkit equipment. And that. But this guy's not working. Uh, yeah, I do. We're expecting to see an AC signal there that somehow varies as, as I turn the uh, controls. Uh, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Put this on times one. And that's going to lower. Okay, I'm going to. But we'll leave this on electrolytic over here, just on a counter. No better reason than that. Power on. Mr. Scopey, so it's already got a bit of a, a, bit of a wave to it here. That's a junky looking thing. Oh! Who's here? Are you wondering why you're still inside? Mm -hmm. I'll let you out in five minutes. Okay? Five. Peanut. Peanut. Five minutes. What's happening here? What's, what's going on? Oh! Mm -hmm. two, two cats, so they're ganging up on me is what's happening here. Okay, let's go back to the scope now. They're at least warmed up.
I might get mauled by these cats at any moment. So we got some kind of a thing here. That just does not look at all like what I would expect. But then the thing about these instruments is sometimes, like especially tube testers, sometimes the signals they're using inside to test the tube are nothing more than just blah, 60 cycle uh, AC signals and there's nothing, nothing spectacular going on at times. Um, but you, not, not what you would imagine. Let's make this a little bigger. And it's just one horrible looking thing, isn't it? Now, this guy comes with a three prong plug and I've got him plugged into an ungrounded outlet. I wonder if I plug him in a grounded outlet if this whole picture would change. I'm already attaching this, attaches a ground to the uh, chassis. Attaching this also attaches a power company, you know, green wire ground. So I can't imagine plugging in the third prong is going to change anything here. Uh, we're still on restricted power. Give it a little more. Ooh. Okay, that's what we got. We got we got something ugly. Okay, let me turn the control here. What happens? Oh, what is happening? So it looks like dirt in the control. Dirt in the control. So what's happened? It's just gotten really gigantic. That actually looks better. Now that looks more like what I would expect. Definitely. And uh, well, is this just open all the way? Or was that the magic spot? Is that the sweet spot? That's backwards to my thinking. My thinking is the sweet spot is, is where the voltage disappears. You know, it doesn't doesn't seem to grow in and grow out. It seems to pop in and pop out. But but, but is it can be okay. I'm putting it right. yeah, oh man. Okay, so what's happening there? Uh, so at this point, what is the eye doing? I mean, I don't even have a, uh, I have nothing on here to be tested. It's testing nothing. Better, better. Well, let's leave nothing, because it's doing something. Let's leave nothing, it's doing something. So you can't see the details of the eye, but you can tell it's definitely closed. So I'll just move this a little bit and see what this does. Well, this is new. Uh, this eye is never opened on bridge. Oh, I've got it on electrolytic. Kazoo night. My cat just sneezed. It's just dirt in this control. checking open terminals. Oh, now it's closed. Is there something loose? Something with the eye? Something with the tube in the socket? Oh, I almost pulled it out. Something with dirt on one of these switches which I cleaned. always in the back of my mind. Am I just doing something wrong? No, I don't think so. So what we're getting here is, uh, I'm going to put on a capacitor. Let's put one on. Let's find out what this is for sure. I'm 
think it's a point 0.1. So it's 97 nanofarads. So that would be the same as uh, 1,000, no, 100 nanofarads. That's 0.1 microfarads. Did I pass the test? 0.1 microfarads. Get that boobed up all the time. So we have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor on here. We put the scale on times 1. And 0.1 is right here. So the way this normally works is it closed, and when you hit the spot, it opens. It just seems to be random randomness here. It just be dirt in this control. No. You kind of think with dirt it would work here and there. It doesn't seem to work anywhere. setting here I haven't thought of. So this power factor control is only involved when you're using the electrolytic setting. This set to internal and what are we seeing up on that scope? Nothing nothing of any significance. Whoa, yeah lots of weird stuff there. Is it possible that this part of the circuit is working right? That signal on the scope is what's supposed to show up. There could be calibration issues with this thing, uh, which I doubt, but there could be. And so now it's doing the right thing, but the eye is not responding properly. So the problem is, is uh, somewhere between here and there. <laughs> I narrowed it down. The problem is somewhere between here and there. Um, The only way I, you know, I know how to proceed with these things is to come up with a theory of failure and then check to see if that's that's the problem. Like since I've already done all the kind of the standard checks, the voltages are okay and all that kind of stuff. We're trying to see the signal going to the grid of the uh, uh, amplifier tube. We have it on the scope. Good look at what comes out of the amplifier tube. But I don't know if this is right or wrong, what I'm looking at. I don't know if this behavior is right or wrong. It just doesn't seem right. So as I turn this control, instead of it being perfectly smooth, it's it's popping a bit. Suggest, look at that. So if you can get the same thing in two places, that, that I think... Then, I see when you balance it, the voltage going to that grid should disappear. You really shouldn't be seeing this. You should see this voltage. I'm figuring this out. I'm trying to figure this out. You see this voltage everywhere but the proper point. But yet, we gotta, we gotta clean that. That's this got to be the next step. Clean the... And what about the other ones? If one's bad, maybe they're all gooped up. Um, this is in a nice cabinet here. Don't know where it's been all its life. Don't know anything about it really. I think it was... I think it lived its life in an audio shop. But since then, it's been 15 years of storage. The reason I bring that up is there was a fair bit of dust uh, in the back of it. Dust in the back of it, dirt in the controls. Let's pull this out of here. Big whopping holes in here to spray junk in. Beautiful. So this, these look like uh, high quality, uh, very uh, rugged controls.
that's what they look like. Okay, let's spray them. Um, don't don't write me any letters. I'm using WD-40 here. This unit is switched off. Make sure gravity is on my side. Now, I'm just kind of spraying it in there rather randomly, right? I don't really know where it's going inside. But counting on the splash and explosion of gas to spray the stuff around inside. This immediately. Actually see movement through that little hole in there. So I don't think there's any doubt I got lots of goop in it. the one thing I didn't do last night. I generally like to have some kind of indication that things need to be done before I do them. Except in the case where my wife asked me to do something. I just do it. Her asking is the indication. Okay, so we'll put the power back on. And hook up the capacitor. Set the bridge, set the regular. The eye is closed. This is a little more normal. That's definitely changed it. So I think this is around the one times, the point one is right here. Hey, was that all it was? So if I turns this to, I should, this should now come one, one, up around here, I think. You gotta be slow on this. There it is. It's a little off. If this is exactly one, uh, point one rather, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be quite accurate. It really should be sitting up about here. That's a calibration issue. That's all it was, dirt, all this time. Try another capacitor. We'll do the uh, single single blind study here. I'll put a capacitor on that. I won't. I won't have read the uh, value. 0.01. I won't have read the value. Single blind. I only have one eye open. Make this more scientific. So we're on the 0.01 scale here, so we should, <laughs> right on, peanut, peanut, it should open up right here. So this, I'll just look at this. We're getting, I think it's still dirt. value is this uh, I, I assume this is just a potentiometer in here it's got uh, three terminals uh, let's look on the schematic again and just see what kind of resistance this device uh, this uh, potentiometer has is it really 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 high in fact I'll just look right here for myself if I can find it on here quickly quickly Power 
power factor, balance control. So is this this is the balance control? I guess I guess you could call this the balance control. It's a thousand ohms. The slider is a ground. spots three spots opening at random is really what it's doing did I now there was another uh, vernier that's this one though this is not involved it's a power factor so whether it's dirty or not doesn't matter this is a snap switch so it's really only these two well should I just goop it some goop it some more What do you think, Peanut? What's the word? <laughs> the word is I have this on reduced voltage too, but I don't think that would make much difference. Yeah. My other my other unit is beautiful to use uh, in this respect. So, yeah, clean them up some more. Powers off. some more sounds like dump in more WD-40 I don't know what else to try I mean I do have some other I do have another solvent but it's it's really blasted in there cool it's swimming inside there now let's let's try flipping this over this way Slide easy. Yeah. Okay, peanut. So I'm gonna let that soak for a while. I'm gonna go and deal with my cat, and we'll be right back. Video time. It'll just be a moment. I think I can get a more a more positive uh, indication as to whether there's trouble with this control or not if I just hook a home meter up to it. There's one lead. This is an ohmmeter too. Hey, does everything under the sun. I'm just going to hook it up. Let's calibrate first. Okay, there we go. This kind of compensates for the strength of the battery in here. I'm on the uh, R times 10. So. just an R scale at the top here, R times 10, so 100 ohms is here. 100 ohms is supposed to be the resistance of the control. Right, 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 let's see. So these are the outside tabs. It's not 100. Times 100, times 1,000, times 10,000. What have I done here? This is uh, suggesting some gigantic resistance here of a mil million ohms. Is this really on there? Is this really on there? Well, maybe what I saw in the schematic is not not correct. Maybe this is a different. Let's let's look at the schematic some more. Um, so if that's not the control. Factor balance it doesn't say power factor control, does it? Balance control. There's something else that might be called control, they would use the word control on range, voltage. So here's the range switch. And he 
these must these must be in, internal adjustments. Maybe, maybe they've lost contact. What are they doing? They're just 100k across a 47k. Hmm. So I'm just looking for any hint here on that. I'm that in fact this is not the main balance control. Well, one hint would be the slider is going to ground. So if I look here, the slider is on a brown wire. It doesn't go straight to the chassis. It follows this brown wire and disappears in the back there somewhere. Oh, I could just do it by measurement. Let's do that. Uh, I, this has to be the, uh, does it call it range right on it? range doesn't appear up here. Power selector. Uh oh, range appears here. What, what, what did I look at? What was I looking at there? Let me just peek back at the schematic for a second. Balance, 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 not range, balance. Just got, just got the wrong word stuck in my head here. Balance control. Do they use the word balance anywhere? I mean, it's a balanced bridge, right? So. No, it doesn't appear up here, but I mean, it's just got to be this. It just has to be that. How can it not be that? How can it not be that? Uh, now, is this... Put this on the chassis. And we'll take some resistance readings. First of all, on the center, is it is it grounded? No. No. Uh, this is still a very high resistance. 10,000 times 50. 500,000. Well, it certainly shows it going to the... Uh, I got the right meter? <laughs> not using leads from two meters again, am I? No. All one meter. So in this control, there's a setting for DC, which is where it is now, and then AC. Where's the ohm setting for this? Because you're switching in a resistor in here. I can't remember. Okay, so if we switch it over and get rid of the resistor. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to use my ohm meter. Okay, this is very helpful. I'm clued in now. So there it is. So it's definitely going to ground. Let's give it a very Definitely, definitely. Okay. Now that I know what I'm doing, we can repeat some of these other tests. So where's the 100? It's supposed to be 100 across here. A zero. That's a zero. R times one. That's a zero for sure. So why am I reading a zero through the resistor here? So I'm running into the actual problem. The circuit this is hooked up to has a defect in it. I'm just doing the other way around. Zero. Zero resistance across this across this. Um, you know, just because uh, I don't want to chase my tail too long, I'll use another ohm meter and repeat the test. I don't usually use my VTVM as an ohm meter. Let's try this one. reading across the outside of it. Uh, yeah, I think I better stay away from using that other thing. It's an ohm meter. Where are we getting here? Seventeen ohms. That shouldn't make a difference. And 
Well, you know, 17 ohms may have looked like a zero on my other meter. It's supposed to be a hundred, but it is in a circuit, so it could be. And, you know, these usually, well, let, let, let's, let's do this, let's do this, get off there. Go on the center pin, the center and one end. Let's see what the sweep range of this is. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, a lot, a lot of these controls, when you move them right to the end, they actually go off their their slider. This is open circuit. I'm turning it back. We hit a zero well, on this very high scale. And I just keep turning it. This is kind of what I wanted to check anyway. It's not very consistent, is it? all over the map. So I think that I think this control is buggered up. I'm sticking more WD 40 into it, I can't imagine that. Okay, so the two tabs I picked are these two here. That means having the control this way should give a zero. I turn it, should just go up from zero. Now, this is just all over the place. on a fairly long bundle of wires. That means I can take it off and move it around. See what we can... Uh, do with it. You're talking slow, Jim. scratch the dial and most of it's hidden here hidden by the knob and this thing got a locking spot sometimes there's a little hole or something that's locking the position of it so you can't get it wrong I'm not so sure that's the case with this let's pull the plug out here For some reason, there's WD-40 running out of this thing. Lock on the inside. So there is no positioning thing, unfortunately. Now what can I do with it here? Remove it from its wires. It looks like if you really wanted to, you can get the back off this thing. It appears to be possible. It says something right on it. Let me read what it says. It says Do not touch says 1k one inch 1k 
thought I saw, yeah, 1K. I think that's right. Isn't that what I saw? Let me just double check. Just make, make sure everything's adding up here. Range, balance control, 1K. Good. It's definitely what it is. I can replace this easy enough. This is a pretty simple thing. I got lots of these, I think. Let's be bold. And we will desolder it. We're going to cut it off because I have the feeling it's just got to go. This will mean we can test it in, in a more uh, certain environment too because it's out of the circuit now. Okay, on the outside, watch this. Everything will test perfectly fine. This is usually what happens to me. On the outside, wow, is it like I uh, can't get closer to a thousand than that. <laughs> okay, if I turn the control, nothing, like you really wouldn't expect anything to happen here. Oh, it's funny, it does make a little bit of a curious thing there. Now we'll go on the slider. Look pretty good to me. I'll go a little slow with it now. It's all over the place. Oh, what happened? Oh, nope, nope, there it goes. So it does seem to be going open. Well, if we're going to replace it before we replace it, we should try opening it since they've made it. So it looks like you can just pop it open. These fold down tabs on the back. So once you release these, sometimes they're only good for one, you know, like you're only really meant to be bent once. So you want to bend these as little as possible or they're going to break. And using a pair of wire cutters may not be the smartest move either. covered in WD-40. Jeepers, these are really tough. Okay. Gonna cut it right off. Okay. Now if I didn't have replacements, I might be a little more hesitant about doing this. other things first. Oh yeah, it's going to fall right off. Okay, so the guts don't fall out. Let go. Come on, you can let go. Oh, isn't that interesting? That's interesting. I find it interesting. Uh, where's my close-up camera here? Where are you, Mr. Close-up camera? I'll just turn it on and we'll hunt it down. Oh, it must be over here. There it is. We'll get a closer look inside. This one, this control is done unlike any other I've seen. Good. Focus is right up close. The uh, the surface is is on the side. There's the contact. What's all that WD-40 doing in there? Is this wire wound? Oh, I think it's wire wound. Yeah, this is a wire wound resistor. Yeah be a little more hesitant throwing all that WD-40 in there. So usually with a wire wound resistor, as you turn it, you can feel the slider bump over the wires a little bit. You know, you got to be like a 
safe cracker. Look at the black stuff that's piling up on the slider. Well, I think that's the problem. The problem is dirt and gook and goo and maybe a lack of pressure. Maybe a lack of pressure on it. Spring pressure, and that would be pretty tough to change that. Um, I'm not going to be able to change the spring pressure. Now what, what's really happened to that surface? Anything happen to it? Okay, here's the microscope view. Uh, this is all really fragile. I kind of move stuff at all. Falls apart. So I see um, I see a lot of waxy looking material kind of built up at the edge of the, uh, the track uh, where the slider goes. And the slider, let me get just a little better focus here. There. So I'm looking at the wires that are visible. Um, they all look quite consistent in the sliding track. The actual, the actual uh, slider itself it looks like it has a buildup of something on it there, um, kind of a brownish material. But yet this makes contact in some places and not in others, so it really should be an issue of the wires. And I haven't turned it. I've tried not to. So I'm going to try to turn it now. We'll see what's underneath. This is one of the bad contact. So, so what I see here is like using the slider as a pointer and trying to put it where I want it. This area, the wires look very bare where the slider is contacting. And then this area in here, the wires appear to be coated with something. I think it's a cleaning issue. Uh, I, I, I think you got to clean these wires. And uh, solvent has to be the way. Now the problem is there could be, you know, these wires, they might have used glue to hold them in place. I don't know, wires going to get hot to use glue. They're, they're, you know, there could be consequences from soaking this thing with various solvents. But I need to get in there with a brush or something and kind of literally clean it up. Get the goop out. That, that's what I think I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to take a little break here and then I'm going to try to clean that thing. And then, whoop. Uh oh, that wasn't so good. And then uh, we'll uh, we'll try it again. Okay, so I've been applying alcohol on it and brushing this with a brush, a cheap paintbrush. And uh, what I want to do is figure out if the clumps of stuff there are coming soft. The brush is just not strong enough, so I'm going to use a stick. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's coming right off. What, whatever this stuff is. I think this is the key, is getting this goop out of here. Looks like a, looks like a long process. Because the brush itself doesn't remove this stuff. same time I don't want to rough up the wires too much. So so what do you think has actually happened here? Some material, some goofball sprayed WD-40 into this thing and it softened up all the glue and other materials that have flowed. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Some Somebody with a can of WD-40 messed this guy up. So it's going to take quite a while to do this. And a chance of getting it 100%. Hmm. Okay, that's what I'm working on. So I'm just 
pipes working along here. It's actually going fairly well. You can actually sweep this stuff right off for the most part. I get the bulk of it off, then I can concentrate on clearly how liquid it is. So one of the solvents I sprayed in here has really done a number on this stuff. Now what is this stuff? Probably is some kind of glue. And uh, goodness knows it's coming soft everywhere in here now. It's not so soft. Now the, the slider doesn't really, you know, it slides in the middle of this area here. It doesn't, doesn't, uh, seems like, th this might be like a moraine that's been created by the slider going by and just continually pushing this stuff. It's going to take quite a while. That's okay. Just waiting for the police to phone me back. Okay, let's see how, it, how it's come out here. Some fibers have come off. A little brush I was using. Uh, looks like I didn't knock any of the wires out of place. Oops. Looks pretty clean now. I haven't done much with the slider itself yet. I think you can see the uh, goop is... The goop is gone. Yeah, I'll take a run at the slider and then we'll test it. Let's see how this is done. <laughs> there's no stop rack on read past. Okay, there we are. We're at one end. The zero end. Here we go. Nice and smooth now. I could feel something right there. I think it... Pretty good. There's a spot right here. It's sticking. Sticking. Or am I imagining it? I don't think it's skipped yet. Oh, and we got right to the end there. That last reading was probably actually a, an open circuit. No, we got all the way up to 11 there. Perfect. Let's go the other way now. I can feel the uh, slider bumping over the wires now. So if this had felt like this at the start, I would have said, oh, that's a wire-wound resistor. But it was so gooped up and smooth, I thought for sure it was a slider. You know, on a, on a, uh, on one of those black surfaces. Just staring intently at the uh, meter. Oops, something funny right at the end, but that doesn't matter. Hey, it's done. Success, okay. So I'm going to put this whole thing back together, put it back in the machine, and we're going to give the machine a try. And see if I haven't found the whole reason why this thing didn't work. Not something I would have guessed. For sure. Okay, that's good. No police call yet. Okay, so I've just got it back together. A small, a small hint from me to you. There's four tabs here. I've bent two of them down. That's enough to hold the back on. I'm not going to bend the other two down because if I want to open this thing up again, the next time I bend these tabs back, they're almost certain to break off. If I bend all four down, I'll break all four coming off. Oop, ruined. But if I leave two up, I have a chance to enter this thing one more time. But I don't plan to. I'm going to stick it back in the machine and we're going to see if it works. Okay, let's give it a try here. On. 
This is a 0.01 capacitor here. So we'll put this on bridge, set this control to 0.01. The I, when I put it on to bridge, should close and only open right around here where the number one appears on the scale. There we go. I closed. Here we go. Come on, baby. Ah, look at that. Not particularly wide. And it's pointing at 1.2, 1.3 in that area as opposed to 1. Typically, these capacitors are pretty accurate, actually. So one would be here. Let's just go around. Up. So I think that it's not quite working the way I'd want it. It seems to me I can just change the sensitivity with this switch. If I do that, we get, we get, we get a, bigger, a bigger opening. What happened there? A little closer to the one. Well, by Jove, I think I did it. And if electrolytic doesn't make any difference here. Still usable, I think. It's still a little bit of dirt on the on the control. It's still jumping a little bit. <laughs> oh, there it opened up wide. We're on paper. So it must be the tiniest amount of uh, resistance in this slider and uh, it keeps the eye from closing or something like that. But anyway, there we go. That was the problem. Bingo. Let's do a leakage here. Not on this though. There won't be any leakage here. We'll do a leakage test. Now that looks like a leaky tra transformer, leaky capacitor to me. Okay, so we'll go leak test. It's already closed. So if you saw it pop open there as I reverse the voltage switch, that's the charge going back in, kind of reversing the operation of the of the circuits here. This is so leaky. Is that the case? It is so leaky. Let's see. Ah, there's still something wrong. Because there can't be any leak here now. has no leak. Maybe maybe this works in a way I don't understand. Oh well, more to do here because this is the part of this unit I really want to make use of. And the last thing I'm going to do today, let me just look at the voltage coming out of this. One fifty scale. So we're on twenty five volts, and the reading here is it's twenty five. One fifty scale, twenty five. Fifty is fifty. Very good. One hundred is a hundred. Hey, this is right on. One fifty is one fifty. Excellent. So it's, it's blasting away, but it's reporting that there's a uh, the, the eye should be open and only closed if the uh, when there's a leak. So something's still wrong. Something more to do. Hmm. Okay. Partially done. Hey, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.